Well, Jeremy Bird, welcome to Center for Development Research. Um, this is your first visit to CEP in Bonn in your new function as Director General of IMI. You are taking over IMI at a time when you have the opportunity to start a major new research program. Uh, tell us more about that. Yes, Joachim, it's, uh, it's called Waterland and Ecosystems and it's one of 15 research programs that uh, run across the 15 consortium centers on agricultural research and as the title implies it's looking at the integration of these questions so rather than looking at water land and ecosystems sent separately it's, the idea is to try and put sort of ecosystems at the heart of development decisions around water and land and uh, in doing so it, it's looking at five particular thematic areas i mean the first one is on irrigated systems now, over the years, irrigated systems have been underperforming and how can you put a new fresh lens on that to see how this large area of, uh, of land, which contributes you know, maybe 40% of total agricultural production, can be become more efficient. Uh, a, so the slogan there is revitalizing canal irrigation or irrigation in Africa, mm -hmm. irrigation in Asia. Then on rain-fed systems, the second area, I think there are a number of issues. One is reversing the land degradation that's taken place over the years in the strive for development and uh, what we call sort of releasing the slumbering giant of the opportunities between the gap in yields that are possible you know, within a, a well-managed system to what's actually happening out in the field. But also looking at providing more resilience to farming communities who are subject to uh, variable rainfall conditions and then that's going to be exacerbated as a result of climate change. The third area on we call resource reuse, reuse and recovery is actually turning on the head the issue of water waste and seeing it as a resource. Uh, so the water waste that is coming from urban areas or from irrigation systems, how can that be turned into a positive and reusing that in a healthy, safe way, particularly for example for peri-urban agriculture, which uh, is high value crops with a market just on the doorstep. Uh, but at the moment, there's concerns about health for the users of the water and for the consumers of the products. Mm -hmm. The fourth area on basins and watersheds actually then expands this to, to looking at the bigger issues of sharing benefits around water, uh, water use, and perhaps moving away from a traditional system of looking just at the allocation of water between different states or different provinces to what the benefits of that water mean. And then what obviously in, in, inherent to that is looking at the trade-offs between the different uses of water. And that's where this also the question of the, the water, energy, food security nexus, which was so prominent here in Bonn in 2011 at the conference, comes in. And what can we do to really make sure that decisions in one area of water, for example, or decisions in energy, don't have an adverse effect on the other areas. And then the fifth area is looking at information and knowledge management and how, that's obviously as a research organization, this is of great interest to us, but how does that then feed into uh, decisions or management change? And I think there's massive opportunities there with uh, new technology, uh, mobile phones, remote sensing, satellite imaging, these types of things mm -hmm. in terms of improving the management of systems. Yeah, great that um, uh, uh, I personally also very much appreciate, and I, I'm sure others here in, in the Institute, that you follow up on this nexus idea, water connected to energy, to food. Um, how will you actually do that? And um, um, the value of water in a world when water gets more scarce um, will constantly go up. Um, so how to connect the water scarcity issue to, uh, to this nexus idea? Don't we need to uh, price water more aggressively? Indeed, but I think also we can look at other ways of uh, looking at the trade-offs between this, these different uh, demands, which all of which are growing. I mean, there's more demand for water, more demand for energy, and more demand for food. But maybe through an example I can explain what's something that happened in Gujarat. Uh, mm -hmm and stem from a research project about 20 years ago and has now become embedded in national policy is uh, looking at uh, trying to recover groundwater levels which have been over abstracted because of a subsidy in electricity uh, and this was something which politically wasn't possible to remove this subsidy 
So re-looking at the way in which the electricity distribution system was designed, separating out a 24-7 reliable supply to the communities and a rationed eight-hour-a-day supply to the agricultural uh, pumps has ended up with savings in, in electricity. It's ended up with recovering groundwater levels. And what's particularly important, it's actually ended up with increased yields as well, so a triple win. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the increased yields is because the, water, the land is no longer waterlogged mm -hmm. because the pumps have been running 24 hours a day. Mm -hmm. So a relatively neat technological fix can also be used to resolve some of these sort of more politically sensitive issues around subsidies and support to rural communities. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, thank you for coming, uh, bringing us uh, uh, new opportunities and uh, research questions from Imi to, to us here in Bonn. We look forward to collaborate with you in the future. Thanks Thank again. you very much. Okay. 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 Thank you very much.